for this privilege given to me to stand before you and bring God's word your way. And also to thank our daddy for this rare privilege given to me to stand on this exalted altar. Daddy, thank you, sir. Let's take this song together. Glorious God, beautiful King, excellent God. us to be among the living. As we are going to go through your word, may you ask your Holy Spirit to minister to us in Jesus' name. I want to share with you this morning on the topic, children are the arrow in the hands of God. Children are the arrow in the hands of God. Open your Bible with me to the book of Psalm 127, verse 3 to 5, and I read, Lo, children and heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. As arrows are in the hand of a mighty man, so are children of the youth. Happy is a man that has his quiver full of them. They shall not be ashamed, but they shall speak with the enemies in the gate. Praise the Lord. From where we have just read, how to define an arrow as a missive weapon of offense, either straight, slender, or pointed, to be shot with a bow. But when we talk about arrow of God, it signifies God's protection and provision for his people. Now, arrows need at least three things. Not only do physical arrows need these three things, but the arrows of God need them too. They are one, target. The first thing an arrow needs is a target. Without a target to aim at, an arrow would seem to have little purpose. Number two, energy. Without energy, an arrow would be a useless object. Number three, penetration. Without the ability to penetrate, without being sharp, an arrow would be rather useless. According to Psalm 45, verse 5, it says, Thy arrows are sharp in the, he in the heart of the king's enemies, whereby the people fall under thee. I declare to you, I declare to you this morning that your arrow shall be sharp in Jesus' name. The world is a battleground of the enemy, and God wants to extend his kingdom here on earth. That means we are the weapon or arrow that God is going to use to achieve that purpose of kingdom extension here on earth. There are processes that God wants us to follow, and there are responsibilities that God has given to our parents. And I want to mention some of those processes here this morning. They are, one, prayer and declaration. Parents has the responsibility to pray and declare God's word in the life of their children. Parents need to pray to God to watch over them wherever they are. And the Bible encourages us in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, to pray without ceasing. Number two, train up your child in God's way by the word of God. According to Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6, it says, Train up your child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. God has a way he wants every child to follow, not the way we want to follow, or the way the world wants us to follow, but the way of God. And as we follow that way, the way will make us to be an arrow in his hands. Parents should teach their children to serve God from the early stage of their lives. Parents should teach their children that nothing is possible without God. I want every parent here to know that eagles are the kings of are the eagle is the king of all the birds in the air, but eagle is not born but made out but made out of eaglets through serious training. 
And I also want you to take note that in this country, we have crude oil, but no one can use the raw crude oil unless it is refined. What refining or the process of refining is to crude oil is what training is to every child. As ego, our children will become kings and queens among their equals in Jesus' mighty name. Ways of training your children. Number one, be a good role model. Parents should be a good role model to their children so that their children will not see them doing something bad and think it's good. Number two, encourage them. Parents should encourage us whenever we are feeling down, like we try to do something but we do not achieve it. Our parents should tell us that we can do better next time, that we should keep on trying. Number three, teach them to volunteer. Teach them to volunteer in church activities, like how we are doing now. Some people are doing choreography, they are participating in choir and the rest. Number four, teach them good manners. Teach them how to greet their elders, how to be respectful, to dress well, and so on. Number five, offer rewards sparingly. Parents should give their children rewards whenever, whenever they do something good. Number two, number three, discipline. First, what is, what is discipline? Discipline is a systematic method of obtaining obedience. Parents should discipline us for excellence. Parents should discipline, parents have the responsibility of bringing us to church, of bringing us to church, and parents should teach us to be prompt in whatever we are doing, like going to church with our Bibles, going to school, and reading our books. Number four, watch out for their friends. As parents, you probably love watching your children make friends, but it's not all friends they make that will be beneficial to their lives. According to 1 Corinthians 15, verse 33, it says, Be not deceived. Evil communication corrupts good manners. That means no matter how good your child or children are, they can always get affected by their friends' bad deeds. So parents should watch out for their children friends and they should watch out the environment they are living in. As we go through these processes of training and raising, God will make us to be a useful arrow in his hands and the world at large. And it is my prayer this morning that God will make our children arrow in his hands and through them the world will feel God's light in Jesus' name.